Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Pleasure to be here with you. And I have such great news. I just found out that Dare to Dream has been ranked by Apple Podcasts as number 200 in self-improvement in all of the USA. I can only tell you because these statistics, they increase weekly. As of right now, while I'm saying this, there's 700 60,000 podcasts. So to be ranked number 200 is essentially being in the one percentile. And frankly, I have you to thank. I have you, the viewers on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, you, the listeners out in podcast land, radio land. Thank you so much because every time you watch or listen, you're driving up the numbers. And guess what? That attracts other people to the show who need this conversation. I've been around for almost 13 years doing this. And why do I keep doing it? Because for me, this is a masterclass. In fact, it's a meditation that I get to have conversations with such exquisite people. And today is no different. I have an amazing guest coming up in a little bit. This is James Redfield, who wrote the Celestine Prophecies, and other books we'll talk about in a minute. I've already had people writing in questions, so I know you're excited for this conversation, as am I. I also want to also make mention that Dare to Dream was nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. Thank you for nominating us. Big deal. And I suggest you subscribe to the show so that these conversations come right into your inbox. It's available on over 40 syndicated outlets. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and Play, Spreaker, YouTube, BBS Radio, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and many, many more. Please leave a review. It helps people know the quality of this program. And I also read them and often will write back when I have a chance. This show is brought to you by our sponsors, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do exquisite energy work out into the world. So anywhere, any country, you can find them, Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com and accessconsciousness.com. My question to you is this, if you knew how to optimize your self-confidence and unlock your full intuitive abil abilities and intelligence for success. Would you step into that synchronistic flow and would you use it today? I hope so, because my guest is James Redfield, the number one best-selling author of the Celestine Prophecy series of books, lecturer, filmmaker, therapist, and writing and business consultant. I love that. We're gonna have to talk about that because I'm a writing coach. So together. James' books have spent over three years on the New York Times bestsellers list. He has so many awards, including Medal of the Presidency of the Italian Senate, the Auburn University Humanitarian of the Year Award, and the International New Thought Award. Redfield is perennially included and mentioned in the Watkins list of the 100 most spiritually influential living people. And James is currently engaged in a worldwide Celestine Prophecy inspiration tour. You can find out more by going to CelestineVision.com. James, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you. It's very interesting because you and I travel in the same circles a lot of the same friends and people we're connected with in organizations and events. And I always think after 13 years of, of doing this, how could it be so long before you came on the show and before we met? <laughs> it's about time. I was wondering about that, you know, it's just, um, but it's time now. It's time now. It's a lot going on in the world. There's reason to be very, very optimistic. Mm. Uh, this, the tour I'm on, you know, is about uh, inspiration. It's an inspiration tour because that's the breakthrough emotion for this time, I believe. Oof, I love so that. Because that has a very definite vibration to it, without a doubt. And I, you know, <laughs> what the world needs more than ever is inspiration. And I know you're talking today on your tour and otherwise about consciousness shifts. 
And I know you've mentioned, oh, there's more meditators in the world than ever before. And you suggest there could be leaps in psychology and metaphysical clarity, how we can get aligned with the specific design of the universe. Them, them's big fighting words right there. So I would love for you to talk more about that. What is your understanding of the current shift in consciousness right now? Well, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, I think we're having a little bit glib here. Sorry, one minute and let me get something off my screen. <laughs> okay, are we, are we good? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's, um, yeah, let's just start with what it feels like. Okay. Uh, this, this is a time when uh, you can feel all kinds of things, depending mm -hmm. on what you watch on television, you know, the news that you watch. Uh, but I think down at the grassroots uh, level, what's happening is that there are two new generations coming into play when you talk about consciousness and the cultural uh, zeitgeist. Mm. Uh, so you have, uh, we have millennials, of course, coming on board, and they are uh, uniquely at an age that's very important right now. The, 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 the biggest, largest part of the bell curve, you know, this big mass of, 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 uh, souls who are uh who are moving in their life are reaching uh age 38 now that's age 38 something very unique happens in the sky you know uh from eight, 38 to 41 uh the uh, for a mass of people pluto in the sky and this is astrology but uh it's is 90 degrees from where Pluto was when that generation was born. So, so Pluto's in nearly the same place for the whole generation. Hmm. And it's, uh, it's called Pluto square Pluto. And, and, and people out there who love astrology would, will know what I mean by that. But it's the wake up call. Uh, when you get to age 38, and anybody who's older will, can remember, <laughs> it's a challenging time because, you know, you've mastered some kind of work. You've, you, you know, you probably have... Uh, maybe uh, have a family and, and uh, many relationships. And it's the time when you ask the question, you know, isn't there more? There's something mm -hmm. more, right? What do I really want to do with my life? So this whole generation, way over 60 uh, million in the United States alone, wow. are, are asking that big question. Now, interestingly, their children of the older millennials are now looking at college they're in late high school looking at college and they're asking this another uh you know kind of higher question which is oh uh, what do i how do i want to get educated do i want to just throw myself into college and play around and come back with a bunch of money that you know, you know loans or do i want to do it differently yeah so they're asking this intuitive question mm -hmm. uh and at the same time you have baby boomers who are many uh, of them are going into retirement and they're thinking, what do I really want to do with my life now? Yes. But really you have three generations asking the larger questions. Mm. And when that happens, you know, the whole zeitgeist of the, of the human consciousness uh, is stirred. And I think that is what is going on. We are, uh, we are a time when, people are reached really exploring their lives at a different level. Now, the background to that, of course, is all the challenging aspects of politics and, and culture and uh, you know, health and all the, the background noise there. But I believe that the, 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 the rising uh, focus is on consciousness, and on this inner world of living what you want to really, uh, the way you want to live, the seeking of mission and, and you know, what the soul is, 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 is seeking to push us toward. So when that happens, uh, and I say this all the time, you know, it's a new time in the world. Yes. And we're able to do things intuitively mm. that, no, uh, that, that the world has never seen before, in my view. In, in intention, the power of intention is increasing. Uh, so it's, it's a grand time. Uh, 
for me uh, as well, you know, because what's happening is that uh, the Celtic Prophecy and other older classic books are suddenly being passed around by these generations more and more. Mm. So that's why I'm out on the Celestine Proce Prophecy Inspiration Tour. So you're saying that the Celestine Prophecy, your works are having a resurgence with a well, whole new group, a whole new age group, uh, much younger when the book was published, who are just discovering it and it's having impact on them? That's right. Mm. You know, in the book is, you know, I talk about the book as, a, as though, it arrived through me, but it's, it's not my creation entirely because what I was seeking to do uh, with the Celestine Prophecy is lay out the steps into consciousness that the human uh, uh, race, the, the human collective has discovered in the world. And I now think there are 12, and, and these are archetypal, which means they fire up your inspiration Mm. when they're integrated with and, and we can talk about a few of them just to give an example but but what uh, overall what's happening is that our, we're firing up our consciousness uh, our inspiration level our sense of intuitive intelligence is starting to spark and we're really it's, it's the new time for self-exploration and, and finally doing what we want to do as individuals yeah, very exciting. And I think at the same time, when you're talking about these groups, and by the way, I love those millennials. I'm a little jelly. I got to say, I'm a little jealous because there's so much that the younger people, God, I never thought I'd say those words, but there's so much younger people have access to that I certainly did not coming up. There are types of music. There is plant medicine. There is an awareness of consciousness. There is actually um, a rejection of the paradigm that you know, you and I grew up with that saying, I see how that worked for you. I see how this is turning out. And this is not what I prefer for my life or for my world. And I have to give them a lot of credit. And I think they're, um, in general, of course, speaking, very loving age group. I have found incredibly accepting, very open um, to older groups, older people, wisdom, connection. They're sort of like the, um, the new age hippies or something. But they're very inclusive. Very and inclusive. Across generations with children as much as older people. Um, and it's, it's really fun to see. And, and mm -hmm. you know, they get a, a bad rap often because they didn't seem to be engaged at first. They, you know, they, they but who could blame them? Well, you know, look at, look at the world. Parenting. Uh, so, you know, what is, what's happened? And I also think that it, they're a unifying generation. I think the, mm -hmm. the generations... Uh, alternate between being explorers and abstract thinkers and then uh, the next generation being uh, uh, unifying that information into a positive sort of collective integrated form. So I think, uh, you know, these, the millennials are having to take all these values that were explored by baby boomers, for instance, and, and distill them down to something that's that's real and accomplishable and discussed in a way that's down to earth. Very uh, exciting. So yeah. let, me, let me ask you this question because you mentioned your book, you mentioned the resurgence, and I want to tie this into uh, Lori Cowling from Canada wrote in. I have a question, and this is her quote. When I received my book, it was given to me by a neighbor I barely knew. She told me that James' book, was very special and that the only way to get the information from the book out to the world was to share it from person to person because the mainstream wanted to keep the information quiet. I wrote my name on the first page under a few other names and passed the book on. I wasn't sure if it was really being suppressed by mainstream, but I knew once I read it that it was very important awareness and everyone should read it. It wasn't until years later I found it in a store. I have my own copy now. Was James aware that the book and information was being so effectively shared this way? Did he know that it would start such a revolution of awareness? It was my first book that created that light in me. There's your question. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Uh, <clears throat> well, I did know. You know, I, I, I had a kind of 
a series of intuitive um, visions about it, uh, even before I wrote it. It was, it was very interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't tell the press, for instance, this, you know, because uh, they, they, it sounds like, oh, well, you, you think you were chosen or, or something. But what it, what it was for me was a, a uh, reinforcement of the idea that we all, all have something to deliver, a truth mm -hmm. to deliver into the, uh, into the, uh, the world, you know. So what I was seeking to do with the, with the Selsing Prophecy is to take the 100 years of the human potential movement and distill it into what uh, you know, the famous psychologist Carl Jung said was archetypal openings that humans already had the capability of, of firing up into consciousness so, so that there are steps that can be fired up to, to, to live in, in, a, in you know, an expanding consciousness, which I think we've done over the last 20 years, and especially what's happening now. So, and would you be correct about that, about uh, suppressing the information from mainstream and it being like almost secretly passed from hand to hand and signed? Well, I don't want to get into conspiracy theory, but I do think it was, uh, um, the information was definitely threatening to some people. Mm. Wow. So, Come far. but you know, but but that's okay. You know, I mean, new information always is, right? So, I just ignored that and 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 just concentrated on the people who were receiving the book and and passing it along. And it's very interesting that it became a pass along because we didn't do anything really. The publisher wasn't going to do much. Well, the first the first time I published. Yeah, we create our own company at first to, uh, to to publish it in a paperback at first, and you know there was no publicity other than we drove around all over the United States and 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 took it to bookstores. You know, back then, you know, you're talking 20 years ago, there were all these mom and pop bookshops all over the place, right? So you could walk in and talk to the owner because the owner was always there talking books. And so that's what we did. And we, we maybe, we did probably 50 cities, five or six bookstores in each one. Wow. And when we walked in, the owner, we had a great distributor, newly from in Atlanta. Uh, but we walked in and we gave the owner uh, a copy of the book. And so he could, if he liked it, wanted to order it, he could do, he could do that. And because it's about synchronicity, right? It, the book, you know, it's the basis of the book. Uh, we figured anybody who was in the bookstore when we walked in had to be there to get a copy of the book. That is great. Oh, I love that you're using your own principles and, in publishing. And we, and we probably gave away 2,000 books in six months of traveling around. And then, of course, what happened is that people did you know, they did realize, oh, he's talking about the things that, that I'm feeling, mm. you know, that I see in my consciousness. And so they obviously wanted to talk about it with their friends. So they would, you know, give a copy away. And that it, you know, it over that the next two or three years, of course, we, we turned it over to a New York publisher just to get it out more widely. Uh, it's in over uh, 50 countries now. but what happened in those first two or three years was it became the the best-selling book in the world for two years and all we did was that and after that it was just scrambling to keep up with uh you know getting enough books published and uh so it was uh it that was nothing that we did other than you know get it out there so that, and people recognize what I was hoping they would recognize, that we were all doing this together. I love this. Oh all my this goodness. Time. I just want to reiterate what you're saying, because this show is called Dare to Dream. This is about your vision. This is about creating your vision into your reality. And so James, as an author and a therapist, self-published his first novel in 1993. 
He went to so many lengths believing in himself, even when it was turned, around, turned down by publishers. He's explaining he gave away at least probably 2,000 books, went to bookstores in 50 states with copies of Celestine Prophecies, believing it was synchronistic when he walked into the store. And I am so curious, what compelled you? Because the outward evidence when you're turned down by publishers, when there's really no movement for a while, except all the energy and action you are taking by yourself, what compels you to keep forging forward despite outward evidence that you know this book is ready to be received? How did you create that dream? Well, a lot of it was instinct, you know, help intuitively. Okay. I was getting, but, but also I had good, you know, I had good practical evidence that it would be a word of mouth book. Uh, so we tested it. I tested it for six months. How and, so? Well, like you would have moved. I, I would, I took, I made 50 copies. I gave it to, you know, at any one time I probably had 30 of them out with people, friends of friends, not, not mm. friends, <laughs> friends who agreed to read it and give me feedback. And once I, then I'd meet with them again and I'd call them up, you know, and, and I'd say, well, how are you, where are you in the book? Well, I stopped it. Yeah, I haven't, haven't finished it. Or I would get, well, I got all the way to the end, but I got a, you know, I, I, I sort of I got distracted. Well, when somebody tells you that about a book, there was a pause, there was a lapse in energy, right? In the book. So I did, I just got specific information from all these people and i just took it as a synchronicity they were telling me this mm. i would absolutely go to the exact spot where they stopped reading and f and intuitively look at where it drug or where it was not clear and i would fix it and i did that for six months and at the end of that six months when i'd give it out people would say hey this was pretty good um you know, can, can I have another copy? I'd like to send it to my friend in California and, and so we could talk about it, right? So I had good evidence that, you know, it was relevant to people. Genius, <laughs> love this. Oh yeah. my God, as a book coach, I love this. I'm gonna have my clients listen to this. So we're talking basically back then, synchronicity. Today, you're saying more than ever, Synchronicity, synchronistic life. So how can we today be aligned with, with luck, with creativity, with synchronicity right now? What do you recommend we do? Well, I think there's a, there's a series of steps. First, you have, a catch, you have to catch the vision of that. There, all of us have had synchronicities, moments of these magical moments when you wanted to get something done. Usually you have an intuition to do something a mysterious coincidence, you know, it happens and it, it, it presents an opportunity and you know that's a flow, that's the life flow, high inspiration energy, that's the life flow uh, that we want, right? Now, <laughs> things knock us out of it. You know, the reason I do longer workshops is because there's, there's a process for this and it's not, it's not complicated. In fact, it's very simple. Uh, and I think we can we can grasp it now at this level of consciousness in the world more than ever before. Uh, and it has to do with start first, you know, change our reaction patterns. You know, what do you do the first thing in the morning? Do, are you worried about something? Do you you know go into uh, the list? Yeah, we all have the list. <laughs> Or do you stop and, and maybe in the, the drowsy uh, last moments of sleep, you try to focus on well, what, what, what inspiring things might happen and what are my real questions in life, my deeper questions. So that's where you start. You, you change your reaction patterns and you give enough time to staying alert. What are my deeper questions? What am I getting intuitively? to that tells that gives me a hint of what i should do to get these questions answered and that's when the synchronicity can happen 
and that's the flow we want, but we sort of have to pause and get into that zone feeling of watching for the next synchronicity. Uh, and that, that with into, in, intention, and that's a, that's a longer element, but intention is big. And, and, and I argue that never before has intention been more powerful than right now in the world. Why is that? It's a level of consciousness. I mean, and do you think also because of the changes going on in the universe, the up leveling, the dimensions, all of what we hear is happening, that that's actually supporting us so that when we have this vision, when we have this intention, it literally is becoming matter much quicker when we're aligned with it? I think you're exactly right about that. Mm. I think it's, we, and we, you know, we know how to do it. And, and because it's more powerful, the results come more quickly. Mm -hmm. So you get immediate uh, reinforcement to keep doing this. You know, I, I'm at a point where I set a little quick intention about almost everything. Oh, I love it. Did you set an intention before our podcast? Absolutely. Ooh. It would be fun, energized, and in the service of the listeners out there. Okay. I love it. I am aligned with that thousand percent. So we're talking about the flow of synchronicity, mysterious coincidences. Um, what about synchronistic events? Is there a way that we can discern the meaning of synchronistic events? And is that important? Yes, it's very important. Uh, but you have to know what questions, you know, we have, we have subconscious questions sometimes. We have these questions about where our lives, where, where we want our, our lives to go. I mean, the ego, you know, our strategic self says, you know, here's where I want it to go. Uh, but then we have this intuitive intelligence, you know, well, what's, what's this, which way is this supposed to go? What does my soul want my journey to look like mm. uh, from here? And, and there's something about going from there, you know, letting yourself be intuitively guided, you know, and that's, that's so abstract for so many people out there, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but for the people who can, can conceptualize that, you know, we have thoughts that come that are instinctive. They're kind of, they drop into our minds from uh, minds from nowhere. For instance, the biggest one, one of the biggest one is you start to think of an old friend you haven't contacted in a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and when we call them, what happens is what? What do they say? Oh my God! I was just thinking about you. <laughs> now, I've, now I've I've asked that question in twenty five countries, in numerous languages, and everybody answers it the same exact way. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is how powerful intuition is. We're guided if we tune in, if we just listen. So that's another change in habit that that we have to master it, it's not hard you just have to you know put a note on your bathroom mirror that says tune into your intuitions you know <laughs> uh, and it, and finally you we you know you, once you and of course meditation is the big bottom line breakthrough point you know and there's, and, and as I say, you know, there's more meditation going on in the world now than ever before. And I always like to say to people, look, meditation works. Hmm. And meditation always heals your heart, hmm. which means it heals your emotions. Most people get thrown out of their synchronistic flow about by an eruption of emotion of some kind. And when you meditate, especially if you meditate seeking a higher kind of heart opening, a, a agape love state, not for another person or any, anything else, but a state of that heart opening, what happens is that that becomes your emotional, your, your chief emotion, and that's our birthright is to have that as our emotional strength. Mm. And then all the other anxiety bounces off that. It, still still we feel it we get hit by anxiety we get hit by anger 
you know, we get hit by the hurts that happen in life, but they, they, once you could come back to this ag- heart open agape state, then it, it, you come back to that more quickly. Right. And that's, that's, that's the secret to catch right. yourself. I'm in an emotional thing. I'm insecure, whatever it feels like. I'm angry, you know, coming back to this, this, this chief emotion, this prime emotion that we have in our souls, which is love. Mm. Now I have a fun time, you know, in workshops and especially with the press because I'll start talking to love and they'll, you know, (laughs) You know, the, the, the secular world, you know, the world is, that doesn't even know what the word consciousness means. There's still a lot of that out there, right? right. They, have, they think love is the most mushy, uh, superficial, hypocritical thing you can possibly talk about, right? And for good reason. A lot of people talk love that really don't practice it. Mm. But I'm talking about your own love. Mm. You know, love state that we in in the meditations that, that I like to do. That's the mantra. Open, oh. feel that love, and then see how long you can feel it, and you just expand that. Uh, so it, it gives us a a uh, you know an immediate centering into our own life, and immediate immediate sense of security. And that's what we most of us need, you know, to, to stay in this synchronistic flow. So does karmic design exist? And if it does indeed exist, is it possible to align with our karmic design? Easy, simple, somewhere in between. Well, I, I just think it's, I think it's a very, very clear what the, com, the karmic design is. Uh, and it's okay. something that I believe you know, they're all, you know, all the masters through history, a lot of research in, in the human potential movement scholarship, all point to the fact that there is a karmic design. Everybody at every level, you know, I could, we could walk down the street anywhere and, and ask a person about karma. And they will say, oh, you mean like what goes around comes around? And with would say yeah yeah and they would say that's it what you put out is what you get Mm. so karma in my view is reveals by the well points to the way the universe is really designed and that is around helping helping in other words if you're a helper which means you're trying to look out for other people you're trying to do the best for them. You don't try to sell them something they don't need. <laughs> you know, you're really trying to look out for, for their best interest. And you say, uh, and you, you ask your, you know, you're seeking intuitively. How can I help this person? Okay. And ideally it's set up. So everybody's in a synchronistic flow, right? And so everybody's waiting. Okay. Where's my synchronicity? I'm looking, you know, and somebody comes up and you're going, okay, give me my synchronicity. Right. Well, it doesn't work that way. What happens is, if you want the synchronicity to come, you've got to be prepared equally to give a synchronicity to the other person, mm. right? And, and what happens is if you, if you become a giver in that sense, energy, money, everything, then what happens is that you draw into your life more people that will come and to be a synchronicity for you or to help you at times. So, if you're a helper, you draw in more helper. Therefore, your synchronicity goes faster, right? Now, if you're a taker, even if it's unconscious, in my view, uh, and, and you're like in a control drama, people have read the book know what I mean by that. You know, if you're controlling people because you like their attention or you want their money or whatever, you're trying to manipulate people, uh, that's taking. That's, you're a taker, see? That's why we got to get into meditation and get rid of those unconscious control dramas that we have. Uh, and, but once you do, and if you see, think about taking, sometimes it feels good. You know, you're standing up for yourself, you think, but what happens is if you're a taker, you draw into your life more takers, right? And so your synchronicity slows way down. 
it doesn't end, but it slows down because the taker that you're bringing into your life is not there to punish you. It's they're there to show you what you are doing to people. Hmm. Okay. So that's, you know, that's pretty simple. You know, you either take her or give her. Right. Uh, and I believe anyone can, you know, I say this all the time. I think anyone could prove that to themselves. And what, what does it call for us to do? Be more conscious about how we can not just have the intention to give, but have, you know, specifically stop and check in with your intuitive, intuitive guidance. I even, I, and you know, the whole idea of tithing, you know, that's universal across every mystical tradition. Okay. You should give, you should give part of your wealth away, right? When you get it. And, and, and I say this all the time, you people say, well, you shouldn't test the universe. You know, that's not right to expect to get something from your giving. Well, in most of the religious texts that at least four that I've checked, it says, yeah, you can expect. Give, give where you're intuited to give. Yeah. And it, you can, you know, you can just, okay, where's my abundance? Yeah, I'm watching. And, and you can check that and it'll, it'll, it'll happen. I promise. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I've tested this. I've had this experience and you know, I want to just share with people who may be looking for a way to tithe or just get started. I mean, obviously something you believe in that calls to your heart, that's the best place. Also, and I'm, you know, Amazon does not sponsor this show, but if you go to amazon.com slash smile, it allows you every time you make a purchase to contribute to the charity of your choice. I found this out through Michael Bernard Beckwith. He's been on the show many times and even agape, his agape is there. And here's the beautiful thing. It actually doesn't change the price of what you're paying for. Same price, just Amazon extracts a portion of what you're paying for, gives it to a charity. So this is a beautiful way to set something up. You don't have to do one more thing, but every time you pay, it goes to your charity or you know, find someone on the street or find uh, habitats for humanity or some kind of group, animals, obviously, you know, there's uh, women, sex traffic, and there's so many ways to give today where you're really needed. And of course, if you don't have money, there's time, there's energy, there's skills, there's talents. You can show up and, and you can change the world. You know, every person's contribution makes a difference. And, and start, if you can't, you know, it's, you know, 10% is a vacation, <laughs> you know, so work up to your 10% if you, if you can't start off with that. But it, it, the main thing is to follow your intuition. And then what I like to do is, you know, you have money. Okay. This is, this is the money I'm going to give away. Nothing is more fun than to say, okay, here it is. And, and you just wait for the in your intuitive intelligence to bring in where to give it, you know, mm -hmm. and synchronicities happen. I've had, I've had people in old cars, you know, they're already smoking, come right in front and it, the whole thing blows up right in front of me when I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this money? Oh. Right. So, you know, you get to help individuals. Mm -hmm. That's the fun. You know, it, at the time when they most need it, you're there. And, uh, it doesn't have to be much, you know. It, 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 it. I just, I just read a great story about the actor Donnie. Uh, let's see, Mark Wahlberg's brother, Donnie Wahlberg, and he went to a restaurant like an IHOP, and this gal was waiting on him. And I guess he asked her a question, and she said, "Yeah, she actually had gone to college. She was getting a very impressive degree, very smart, but she said I can't get it." because it costs $763 and I don't have it. You can imagine waiting on tables at IHOP. It was going to take a long time. And so he left her a tip and it was $2,000 to cover her college degree plus 
have some money to pay off some bills. And it made it into the paper, you know, because he can do that. And he completely changed this woman's life. And now you have a very beautifully degreed, like African-American woman. I forgot the degree. It was something like chemical engineering, like really highfalutin. But here she is now out in the world. She can get a job, which she's really meant to do and, and start to be a contribution. And I'm sure in her way, she'll give back. So Yes, showing up for individuals even. You know, maybe just you and that person notice you may not even make it in the paper, but so many you people do that. Lives. Yeah. So many people do that and nobody ever knows. Mm. That's know, beautiful. It, it, it's, a, it's giving. I mean, it's the easiest way to give. Mm. Um, and, so I want to just, I just want to reiterate what you've shared here. And we're going to take a very quick break because I think these steps are really important. And for people listening, I want to make sure for me as well that we get this. Uh, so the first thing when we're talking about synchronicity and staying in the flow is to catch the vision, right? Allow, be in a flow state so that the magic can come to you. Remember that flow life has inspiration. Next, change your reaction patterns that means your habits. So if you wake up in a particular way, or if you go through your day in a particular way, or you have patterns that are not of a contribution to you, have a deeper inquiry, a deeper questioning line that will lead you to inspiration. You can ask, what am I getting intuitively? And so you can allow those answers to come to your questions. Right. Next, you wanna set an intention and of course, I want to just add, I think you mean also action, because once you get information, you must take action. And um, you highly recommend meditation, that that's where your breakthroughs are going to come. Meditation is about healing the heart, healing the emotions, and it rids you of the unconscious control dramas. And the final piece was find the space with which to give, that within your flow, that your acts of service are lining up. And as you tithe your 10%, or wherever it is, you want to be of assist, so will you receive. Yes? That's right. That's right. Without, you, know, you want to maximize your karmic mm. look. Karma design. Yeah, that was, that was a really... This has been an amazing um, answer with beautiful chunks that have just all come together. So, uh, folks, we're going to be back in just a minute. This is Dare to Dream, and I just want to let people know, you know I'm a media visibility shaman out into the world, as I like to say. I am an expert in books and bestsellers and in how to be interviewed. And if you're ready to be interviewed, I welcome you to join me in the ultimate visibility formula. The class is rolling out yet again. And even if you don't have a list of shows, even if you don't have publicity knowledge, I teach you live and coach you in all of this. The ultimate visibility formula registration is at debbyd.net slash visibility. It's D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash visibility. What will you get? You'll find out where the shows are how to be interviewed, and you will be coached, of course. You'll receive a list of radio and podcast contacts. They'll be hot. You will have your media kit and pitch letter built. You'll have your speaking points. And in the coaching, you will find out how to avoid any freezing or fudging during the interview and instead how to feel really confident and savvy during the process. And of course, what to do after. How do you repurpose your show? How do you develop relationship with influencers? Most people really just want that piece. And some people say, yes, I want to be interviewed, but I also want results. You will get all of that. This program is for those who are ready to be seen as the expert in their field and start to be interviewed and get results. And I will say on the heels of what James Redfield is sharing right now, it is our time us conscious spiritual entrepreneurs. It really is our time as the light workers to get the words, the message, our vision out in the world. And I got to tell you, media is the best, fastest, easiest, most yummy way to do it. So use that tool, debbyd.net slash visibility. 
And if you are just tuning in to Dare to Dream, this is Debbie Dashinger. I'm interviewing James Redfield, author of The Celestine Prophecies and the book, The Twelfth Insight, both available at Amazon as well as on your favorite bookseller. So James, I'd like to talk a little bit about dreams. How can we optimize our dreams? How can we optimize our contributions? Well, that's, that's what all this flows about, right? Uh, and I, I mentioned that I believe it's, it starts uh, early in the process where, you're got, where you commit to your intuitive intelligence. Uh, that opens up in meditation. But what you will find, I believe, uh, is that we are guided intuitively toward uh, something. Okay, and we have in our heart. I mean, I had no idea I was going. I was going to be a writer, you know, um, but you know, you have you have intuitions about doing something, and even adolescents will say, oh, look, you know, "I've got this great thing to do. I just don't know what it is." <laughs> but what happens is we have to let our intuitive intelligence point it out and clarify it. And what happens if you start in your flow? follow intuitions to get educated to you know you get intuitions to do things and you don't won't even know why you're actually mm. joining your class or joining a group or moving to a new city or you know you won't know quite what it is but if it you know if you if it's clearly an intuition be practical you know don't don't you know don't be homeless but but you know strategically try to implement your intuition. And when that happens, there'll always be a synchronicity and the synchronicity will be clarifying. It'll point to something else that, you know, that inspiration energy will, you know, go up and you go, yeah, this is, you know, something's happening here. And so over time, what happens is that you start to realize what you're good at. You're giving, right? You're giving. So the way you give advice, you know, you just start to see, oh, I'm pretty good at this. I'm mm. pretty good at coaching, writing, and, and, and publicity, or I'm good at uh, 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 you know, doing psychotherapy, or I'm, I'm just good at, at uh, sh you know, helping people uh, uh, in their lives, or, or just, you know, whatever it, it will be. It will go into some channel in the culture where you're, you feel most oh man, I'm really living my dream now. This is okay, so but we have, to, we have to be guided into it. it yes. So our egos, our <laughs> egos will always rush the, everything, right? Yeah, I think the ego yeah. likes to understand. It likes to comprehend. I am telling you, I'm a living example of what you're saying because uh, last year, just a couple of months ago, at the end of the year, I literally had a divine download. And, is, and I started negotiating because I didn't want to hear it. I was like, I'm fine. I know who I am. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But the divine would not let up. And every single day it was happening. And I was being told over and over again, you're a shaman. You're a shaman. You're a healer. And I'm like, yeah, like these are my friends. You know, they're not necessarily me. But the divine would, will have none of it. And my brain has gotten so involved with the machinations of why and what does that look like? And if I do this, how am I going to, I mean, adding it actually will be spectacular to what I do, but not, I don't know. It's amazing how it stalls the process because I'm being this right now. And at the same time, here's what I know and weigh in, please. I know that I know how life works and I understand this idea of flow. I understand if I deny the inspiration I was given, frankly, I'll suffer because clearly it's a path. It's part of my soul's design, right? So it's just being given to me and it's incumbent on me to do or not. Yeah. Now, if I choose to do it, more will be revealed, right? So I'm taking action. I'm looking up the very few, very well-respected shaman schools and, uh, I think part of my leap is just a yes. And part of my leap is like, oh my God, really? I'm one of them. And them is, these are the people I admire. You know, these are the people I've gone to for healing sessions. And all of a sudden the divine saying, you are that. And I find it really profound, this whole experience. 
Yes. And, and look, that's, that's just it. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, our lives are an intriguing journey of discovery. <laughs> and we were trying to figure out what to do. And, and all we have to do, I believe, is, is get the ego sorted in control. So they're not, it's not, you know, that controlling part of ourselves is not pushing too hard. And we allow ourselves to be guided and we have patience. It really go faster if you, the more patience you have, <laughs> right? That's just how it works because thing, you're looking for the answers and the answers will come uh, and the opportunities will come. Uh, so it's, it's um, you know, the, 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 what's important though is not to throw rationality out the window. You know, it's, we should rationally implement our intuitive guidance, right? I mean, if you're supposed to sell everything and move away, you think. You yeah, know, that would be deep. I don't, thank you. Know I'm not being guided yeah. there, but. Well, but the big. point is, be strategic about that. You right. Know? Move in a way that does not spend all of your money. <laughs> you know, get, the money is just an energy. Keep your energy up. Yes, and overlap is always grace. I, I really concur. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned earlier human potential movement, and I know there are insights. We only have a few minutes left, but I would love if you could just say a little bit about one of the insights that you feel most inspired to talk about. Well, I think the uh, idea of giving energy, okay, which is which in in the Celtic prophecy was the eighth insight. Okay, so what happens is that you know, you, we can feel inspired, energized at some moments, and other times we have a, a, a lapse, you know, we'll get at one of those crossroads and maybe the confusion will, you know, sort of d disappoint us or whatever, and we'll have a lapse of energy. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> the, the key to keeping this inspiration energy is to be able to realize that you, when you give it to others, it, you fill up with it first, right? So what do you do if you're feeling depressed? Go find somebody else who's feeling depressed and talk, you know, talk with them, okay? And do this particular thing. Look at the expression on their face and try to find the inspired self in that person, that, that expression. And just look for it as you talk. You may talk about somber things or troubles or whatever you might talk about but look for the higher self in the person's expression and what happens is sometimes they'll pop into into a kind of their higher self right in front of your eyes maybe it, it could sometimes it can happen speaking of shamanism sometimes it can happen uh for them for the first time and all we had to do was speak to that part of the person mm. you know they talk, you know, different religious orientations talk about the speak to the other person, the glory you see on the face, the, you know, the, the, the highest essence of that person, whatever you want to do, but it's just one heart feeling, you know, and, and uh, the more you can stay in this love state, the better. And again, uh, I have so much fun with love because <clears throat> people say, yeah, I've had therapists, I've had, um, I've had famous human potential uh, speakers say, well, you know, you, James, it's too mushy to talk about love. <laughs> and I say, that's how far, yeah, that's how secular, more secular and materialist the world is when you can't find love. If you can't find love in yourself, then you know, that the heart is very closed, mm -hmm. right? And, and so there, so we have to sort of stand against that trend, in my view, you know? Talk yeah. about love all the time. In fact, increase it. As long as you're giving it, mm -hmm. as long as you're conjuring up in yourself, finding it, giving it, spilling over on other people, then the proof is there. You know, you don't have to feel like you're making it up or they can't possibly think you're making it up because, you know, that, that inspired expression is on your face yeah so it's you know it's a matter of being bold with this you know it's contagious mm. the more we live it the more 
people, we don't have to say anything to people. We, we have this influence. When we walk into a room, if we give an energy, we go in and the first thing we do is give energy to the room, set an intention of, you know, in, in congruent with your purpose in the room. And then you just let it unfold. James, and, I will tell you uh, that I do red carpet interviews and I can feel it. It is not often somebody comes in my space where that occurs. And I can even name names such as Don Miguel Ruiz. He comes even close to me and this incredible aura of love is pervasive. This man has the most beautiful heart and it's palpable. And I have felt this not with many, but with some talk about walking the walk, talking the talk, that love is how they lead the conversation, how they walk into the room. So I have experienced this firsthand and it is a game changer. It's very attractive. It is very attractive, this love energy. Uh, mm -hmm. Folks, right before we get to the end, I just want to remind you, this is Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. I feature amazing successful leaders such as James Redfield. What an honor. And I ask you about creating your important goals. What would you do? What about you? What would you do if you could live bold and free and could not fail? What would it take for you to dare to dream and create those dreams? Become part of the Dare to Dream podcast. It's the number one transformation conversation available. You can donate to the show a dollar or more at patreon.com slash dare to dream. I post shows there. Consider supporting Dare to Dream if you appreciate the program, if you enjoy the insights offered to help you to fulfill your big purpose. Learn ways to live your healthy life and create your big dreams. Help out at patreon.com slash dare to dream. And again, right here at the end, I'm speaking to James Redfield at Celestine Vision. Dot com. James, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, <laughs> lots of stuff, you know. We're, we're really having a, a fun with this resurgence. Uh, so many younger people, uh, and actually three generations mm. that are all acting young, that who are interested in consciousness. Uh, and so it's fun to uh, travel around. I'll be at the uh, Conscious, Hawaii, Life. Uh, Conscious Life Expo. Yeah. Uh, and, Where can uh, people find? So you're speaking there Friday night. And what are you going to be talking about at the Conscious Life Expo? Well, we'll be talking about uh, a very clear pathway for anybody there who comes to move into this flow that we're talking about. Mm. Uh, it, it'll There will be uh, plenty of time for... Uh, you know, speaking at length about these steps that we can take. And so it's, you know, it is, uh, I say all the time that the, the human potential movement has now paid off. It, it's out in the world exactly what the high growth breakthrough is uh, for human beings. And uh, we can, it, it's, it's, it's simple. It, it takes some work, but what happens is that we know exactly how to break through to our greatest creativity right now. So it'll be about that. It'll be about uh, sustaining that. Uh, we're doing a lot of things. Uh, we're actually offering coaching uh, for people who are interested in stepping into this life. Uh, so some for people- For them to become coaches or to be coached well, in their lives? Well, so we're creating a platform where the information can be exchanged uh, in a community, but uh, mm -hmm. So coaches and people who want to be coached are mentored. And, you know, it's going to be just growth world. Uh, and that's, that's really fun because, uh, you know, uh, walking along with a coach who knows these, is, how to do this is sometimes the, the most, the, the fastest way mm -hmm. to get there. I can uh, yeah, getting a coach, getting help for your next right step is, it's pretty huge. Um, I, so I, I can't wait to meet you at the Conscious Life Expo. I am so grateful you came on the show and I feel like there's more, there's way more. I am just, I think what I really want to say to you is thank you. Thank you for holding a vision 
like a, a flame more than 20 years ago when you knew what you knew 27 years right it's been a, it's been a minute but you were a groundbreaker at a time when this really wasn't a conversation that was very acceptable out in the world and what whatever reason, whatever inspiration, whatever angels and universe was supporting you, I am so grateful because you were speaking to me, you were speaking to my tribe, you were speaking to my audience, and you made all this possible. You were a big part of that for us. So thank you. Well, I, it was joyful for me. Uh, it's, it's the most fun you could possibly have uh, is to talk about all that, uh, this mm -hmm. from my point of view. And, and to see, you know, it, the, a kind of kind of crescendo happening in consciousness right now is uh, is super fun for me to see. Uh, what a time! What a time to be alive! Yeah, let's get together. Yes. Well, James, thank you so much for sharing your brilliance. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Thanks for your work. Hmm. I end today's show with this quote from Farrah Gray. Build your own dreams, or someone else will hire you to build theirs. Tune in and subscribe to Dare to Dream. You're going to want to hear the next interviews coming up. I promise you it's always great, great, great people on this show. Number one, transformation conversation. And coming up in the next weeks on Dare to Dream, you will hear the guest, David Avocado Wolf. Reality relationship coach, TV star, Patty Stranger, and Lisa Gar, to name a few. Also, if you love what you're hearing and you'd like to see us, and that's fun, if you want to see the faces of the people talking, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you for joining us today. And remember that the secret of success for all dreams is having the courage to begin in the first place. And as James said, Stay in the intuitive flow and synchronicity.